As a follow-on to the last video, uh, I am showing the panda placer here, which I just, just disregard this mess right here. I haven't gotten to that yet. I'm still debugging and figuring things out. But I do have a number of feeders built up, including with their beautiful little magazine holder thingies. But I've got feeders uh, built up, and I'm about to connect them up. So here are their servo leads hanging down from the bottom. I've got some more feeder parts here. Again, quite a mess, but um, it won't be that way forever. I'm still printing some parts out for some of these. Here's a tissue. This is um, instrumental for blowing one's nose. Um, a bunch of the feeder parts that come in bags. I've separated all those from the Panda Placer supply. I've got uh, 30 more feeder sets coming, and I'm printing like mad to do that. So there are some T-nuts. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do a video in a little bit. Oops, I'm going to do a video in a little bit where we build up a feeder from scratch. I have yet to align or... Um, what would you say, kind of calibrate or align or adjust one of these to work perfectly. So you could call me um, adventurous by building so many of these before I've gotten one to work, but I think it, it will work just fine. So from my last video, I talked about how you connect all these feeder boards together. And if you didn't watch that, you've got to go back and watch that. One thing I didn't really say is the orientation of this um, mini, what was it called? Mini serial board, I, I think it's called. So um, the USB connector should be at the bottom when you hook this together. And if Panda Placer Leo is watching, you should also be labeling this because I don't think it is with 24 volt ground TX RX so that people know they can feel really confident when they plug this in that they don't have this board in upside down. You could plug it in upside down. It would work just, it would physically mount just fine, but it would not work. So um Anyway, so there's the mini interface, there's the feeder board one, feeder board two. You can see here I've not connected feeder board three, four, or five. And let me redo that because that's actually a zero base. So feeder board zero, one, feeder board two, three, and four. So I'm going to connect, I'm going to hook those up, uh, up top right now. Disregard the tall screws here. That's for a little bit of something that uh, a little bit of a teaser that um, there's some interesting news that'll come out. Um, you're supposed to only have one spacer in there with an M3 by six, I believe it is, bolt screw, socket head cap screw running through there and a T-nut. And then as I said in the prior video, those mount right into this rail. As far as where you mount these front to back, it's not terribly uh, critical because you have plenty of space here in this rail from the top if we move up here. This is the left side of the machine. You have plenty of space on which to set these feeders. So you set the feeder on the rail like this, and then you plug in its associated servo to uh, the connector. And I suppose I'll tell you right now, uh, you, there's again no keying or anything like that. So the brown lead of this goes to the left and the rightmost pin is left disconnected. So let's get that to fit on there. There we go. And you can see the brown wire is to the left or back of the machine on this side, and the front wire is disconnected. So let me put it differently. The brown wire faces toward the interface, the USB-C serial interface, always. Um, that way, if you're on the right, you could look down the chain and say, brown wire must go on this side, brown wire on this side, brown wire on this side, and the disconnected one would be the one near the end of the chain, so the unconnected one would be uh, toward this end of the chain. Um, these mount up with T-nuts, so uh, again, in the front here, you would have to center this fairly accurately. I'm you know, not crazy because they're wired, but um, it looks nicer anyway. So you're going to center this up here in between these two rails, which is where your board goes. A little side, because I can't help myself, because it's exciting and fun. Um, this is how Panda Placer holds the board. Uh, do I have a board here? I think I do. <laughs> this is one from the Layman PNP, so let's drop this in there. Um, the hair comes with it, by the way, in case you're wondering. So, yeah, this presses up like this. You slide the board over to the left. 
let me look at what I'm doing in the real world and that'll help me to do the physical, the uh, virtual thing. So now the board's set to the left. There are some washers and screws screwed into the end of these brackets and that's your end stop. And I've just got to say, this thing works so great. And I've put this dual level, I should, I'm going to make another video for that. So stay tuned. I've got another video coming where, because I just can't help myself. Um, thanks for watching this quick one on the Panda Placer A1 and the feeder boards.